Now, we will start the glass imagery, which is very important for us to understand. The characters in glass imagery is Tom Wingfield. When Dennis William created Tom, he pulled a neat trick. He created a character who exists outside and inside the play's action at the same time. When you see him standing on the fire, fire escape adjoining the Wingfield apartment, Tom is the narrator. He's outside the action. He's a seasoned merchant sailor who traveled on both land and sea. He's a good talker too, the kind you might like to spend an evening with over a few beers. Beers means drink. He can be funny, as when he describes his runaway father as a telephone man who fell in love with long distances. One actor's reading of Tom's lines can give you the impression that Tom regrets being a wanderer. Another actor can create the sense that Tom looks back with relief, pleased that he broke away at least from his mother. Regardless of the interpretation you favor, you know the Laura, Tom's sister, has a firm hold on his affection. So he often says, oh, Laura, Laura, in the play's final speech, I tried to leave you behind me, but I'm more faithful that, than I intended to be. Evidently, memory is a potent force on that Tom can't escape. So you see that Tom is in a dilemma what to do and what not to do. Because the whole play is Tom's memory brought to life on the stage. Tom may be the most important character. However, you could make a case for Amanda's importance as well. Either way, Tom sets the sentimental mood of the play and reveals only what he wants you to know about his family. If Amanda narrated the play, can you imagine how different it would be? So Tom calls himself a poet. He writes poetry at every opportunity. You hear poetic speeches pour from his lips. A co-worker at the warehouse calls him Shakespeare. Does he deserve the name? Do any of his speech sound like poetry to you? In addition, Tom claims a poet's weakness for symbols. In fact, the story bulges with symbols of all kinds. Of all kinds. So, you see that some obvious skeletal glass animals signifying Laura. Some more obscure frequent references to rainbows, for example. For a full discussion of symbolism in the play, we see the symbol section of this volume. You really see Tom in a cheerful mood. He complains, groans, sulks, argues, or pokes fun at others, especially at Amanda. You might be thinking that why does he behave in this manner? What makes him behave so? Why does he think it to be something like this? And he thinks that he might be doing something which is not advisable for him to do. Now, the question arises with individuality. What the individual character thinks about himself. Everything de depends on it. 
if the individual character shows that what he means it is something that is to be taken into account something which is to be taken into account i mean to say that he is to be just from that point of view why people think that he displays such type of characteristics so you see that to cope with frustration and pain tom sometimes uses bitter humor when amanda accuses him of leading a shameful life he knows it is futile to argue so he jokes with his mother about his second identity as killer wingfield he is known second identity and el diablo e l l d i a b l o the prince of the underworld or when amanda is about to start reminiscing about blue mountains he comments ironically to laura i know what is coming humor provides only a little relief however that is why he rushes off to the movies whenever he can watching someone else adventures on the movie screen offers tom another diversion from his own dreary existence there are many people as such who like to go to movie because just to for diversion but since he has come to our to come out of out the dark theater and face life again escape to the movies solves no problems at great cost tom learns that running away from problems never clears them from your mind even when he flees saint louis he talks along his memories as mental baggage he can't escape the past however hard he tries escape he discovers in the end is an illusion to so what tom tells you as he stands at the edge of the s stage may be more just the story of one young man's disillusion you might think of tom as a representative of a whole generation of young people coming of age just as the world is expanding into war they have high hopes and rich dreams but the future they wish for never comes it is destroyed by forces beyond their control the world is lit by lightning tom says tom's story then may be both personal and general symbolic of life at a bleak time in our history you can read it either way then the other character that comes is amanda wingfield important character for examination purpose in the production notes of the glass menagerie Dennis William tells you that Amanda is a little woman of great but confused vitality, clinging frantically to another time and place. There is much to admire in Amanda, and as much to love and pity as there is to laugh at. Do you agree? Do you find her as difficult to bear as Tom does? The question might arise. in contrast to tom who sets the mood in the play amanda is a mover the character who sets the story into motion therefore you say you might consider her the play's main character throughout the play laura and jim response to amanda stimulating and complex personality even her husband who has run from her showed a distinctive response to amanda tom shares a few 
tender moments with his mother. But more typically, he is put off by her scolding and nagging. Laura, unlike her brother, usually obeys Amanda's wishes and tries to understand her. Jim, during dinner, during, with the ring feels, is caught up by Amanda's vibrant cheerfulness. What are you likely to remember most about Amanda? Is it a irrational and inappropriate belief in the romantic past? Or might it be her tacit conviction that children are bound to succeed in life? Because of the natural endowments, she refuses to accept the fact that Tom is a malcontent with a dead and end job. As for Laura, Amanda denies that her daughter has anything wrong with her, that a little charm and a typing course won't fix. Even Jim O'Connor's Quite an ordinary young man strikes Amanda as a shining prince destined to rescue and marry Laura. Amanda's wishes for her children sometimes leave her blind to reality. To understand Amanda, you should decide whether she's really as far gone as she often appears. Is she unaware of the truth? Or does she simply refuse to accept it? Despite her frequent silliness, she evidently has practical streak. She thinks seriously about the future. That is why she presses Tom to bring home a friend for Laura. Obviously, Amanda's, Amanda acts foolish much of the time. But she nevertheless has admirable qualities. Amanda tries hard to be a good mother. After her husband runs off, she does the best she can to provide for her family. Above all, she is strong, stronger than Tom, and stronger than her husband. When all her efforts have failed, she sticks by Laura. She emerges tender and noble, and you can depend on her never to give up hope. So at the end of the play, with Tom en route to Seven Seas and Laura broken-hearted over Jim, Amanda shows dignity and tragic beauty. What, in your opinion, is the source of Amanda's transformation or might have had dignity and tragic beauty within her so there are many questions that would arise. As a girl, many questions. The third most important character for the examination is Laura Wingfield. It is more than coincidental that the play's title refers to the collection of glass animals, animals that belongs to Laura. She is so fragile that she can hardly function in the real world. Not surprisingly, her favorite figure in the menagerie is the unicorn, a creature which Laura calls freakish, which is precisely the way Laura has spent much of her life. Can you think of other qualities of the unicorn and resemble Laura? Laura frequently escapes to a private imaginary world, occupy the fragile glass animals. When you consider Laura's personality, can you speculate on why the menagerie is glass rather than some other material? Of the three wing fields, Laura stands in the greatest peril, for she lacks both the strength of Amanda and the potential escape like Tom. Laura creates the impression that she is forever going to be a misfit. The world is simply too harsh for her. She confesses to Jim how awkward she felt in high school. She wore a brace on her leg and believed that everyone is 
in school noticed her clumping around. As people grow older, they usually overcome feelings of shyness. Why didn't Laura? In spite of her fragility, though Laura is the most serene member of the family, of her family, she leaves the warning to Amanda and Tom. Sometimes she may remind you of a child who creates a walk and doesn't know it. In a innocence, Laura doesn't realize how Tom and Amanda bleeds for her. It is possible to think of Laura as merely a timid, neurotic little girl, totally absorbed in her own troubles. But can you find more substance in her character? Is she sensitive to Amanda and to Tom in any way? Does she contribute to the well-being of her family? You may not have to search far to find likable and sympathetic traits in Laura's personality. Laura hides in a make-believe world. Only once during Jim O'Connor's visit does she venture out of it into the world of reality. Jim has given Laura a bit of self-confidence. He even convinces her to dance with him. During the dance, they bump the table knocking the glass unicorn to the floor and breaking off its shingle horn. Do you see the symbolism of this, of this mishap? Laura, for a short time, feels like any other girl who has been swept off her feet by the boy of her dreams. Unfortunately for Laura, though the time of her life lasts no more than a minute, when Tom leaves home for good, why do thoughts of Laura haunt his memory? Is he plagued by guilt? Does he love her more than a brother should? Does Laura have charms that have gotten under her skin? There's another character, Jim O'Connor. The three characters which I just now said of Amanda, Laura, And of course, before Laura, I've also talked of the character of Wingfield, Tom Wingfield. There are very three very important characters in the novel. But there is another character also in the novel. And this character, Jim O'Connor. Tom tells in his opening speech that Jim is an emissary from the world of reality. If that is so, reality must be a fairly dull place for Jim is a nice but rather ordinary young man. On the surface, he is well-mannered, hardworking and responsible. He is a pleasant guest and he dutifully entertains Laura after dinner. He does all you have had and you would expect him to do. Why then is Jim so disappointing? Even Jim himself knows that he is a disappointment, although he puts up a smooth talking and smooth, self confident front. When you consider the available high school record, he should be face, racing up the ladder of success by now. Instead, he's still in the pack. Common wisdom which Jim believes says that if you work hard, you will succeed. Jim has worked hard, but he hasn't succeeded. So he takes self-improvement courses in public speaking, thinking that greater social poise will help him land the executive position of his dream. He's also studying radio engineering in order to get in on the ground floor of the new television industry. He seems to be doing so all the right things and saying and saying the right things too. But opportunity and progress in America 
but the ideas sound trite, as though Jim is mouthing something else words. All day is trying, you never know if Jim will make it big. Perhaps he will. On the other hand, when you recall that the illusion dominates the play, you will suspect that Jim's plans appear fancy and that he's placed too much faith in a hollow dream. In the end, he may just plod along like everyone else. <coughs> After dinner at the wing field, Jim is pleased with the half with himself for winning Laura so easily. His conquest reminds him of his high school days where he held the world in his hand. Laura is good for his ego. He is driven to pursue his dreams, even if he has stepped on others as he goes. Finally, he dismisses Laura <coughs> with the news that he is engaged. Dinner at the Wingfields turns out to be only a brief stop along the way to elusive success. Should Jim have revealed the engagement early in the evening? Was he under any, uh, any obligation to do so? Or was it all right for him to wait until the end of his visit? If he had told his marriage of plans earlier, Laura would have missed a few moments of happiness. Does the fact by itself justify Jim's action? What would you have done under similar circumstances? So many questions arise in Jim. With Jim. That these questions remain unanswered throughout the story. Last immediately. Now, here the characters have said it in brief, which are very important for the examination purpose, and it is very important for you to understand them for your benefit, so that you can include them in your answers. <clears throat> 